Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. So what is a map in JavaScript? Well, you can basically think of it as being similar to an object of key value pairs, but there are gonna be a few distinctions. Today's video, we're gonna go over what those distinctions are, as well as go over a real world example of when you might want to use a map. Essentially, a map is going to be an object-like structure of key value pairs. You can imagine that an object is something like this, where we might have name Chris, height 6, and age 26. A map is going to look super similar, but its properties are defined with these arrows instead. So the first key distinction is that any type of value can be used as the keys in a map. Whereas in an object, as we see in my other videos, is that in an object, the keys are always strings. Even if we use other primitive types like numbers, they will always be converted to strings. So it's implicitly known that these keys here are strings. Now in a map, these don't necessarily have to be strings. They could be other objects. They could be other arrays. They could be primitive values. The distinction here is that any type is valid as a key in a map. Now, when we are creating key value pairs in a map, the insertion order is remembered. If we had placed this one in first, this key value pair in second, and this key value pair in third, our map is going to remember that that was the order that I placed those into it. Now, this can be useful because at a later point when we might want to loop over those key value pairs, knowing the original insertion order can provide us some additional information as far as the history of the map. Now, another key distinction is that similar to an object, which we would declare with object.create passing in null, which if you're not familiar with that syntax, watch one of my other videos on OOP, Object Oriented Programming in JavaScript, or this curly brace syntax, which we're probably more familiar with. It's sort of a shorthand. So like an object declared with either of these methods, a map contains no properties by default. It's basically just an empty data structure. Although truthfully, neither is actually empty. They do have a hidden property, a sort of grayed out property called the double underscore proto. And that's gonna be a, a link up to the that data structures prototype sort of you can think of it as sort of its parent which it will inherit certain properties from another distinction about maps they have available to them you can access their size in other words you can access their length of key value pairs via a property just called size whereas with an object you would have to loop over the key value pairs and count them up another distinction is that maps fall into a category of data structures in javascript called iterables which means that we can iterate over their key value pairs using a for of loop. And the final key distinction is that when we are in a scenario we are where we are frequently adding and removing key value pairs, a map can be more performant in terms of the time that it actually takes to add and remove those key value pairs. Okay, so in order to illustrate this, I wanna revisit a problem that we looked at in another one of my videos on finding the mode of a data set. So check out this example I have here. I have an array of objects here and each one of these objects has some key value pairs. Now I want to find the mode of an array of objects, which means that I'm gonna have to somehow count up the amount of occurrences of each one of these objects. And eventually I should reach a conclusion that says that the house right? Because there are two houses and only one office in this data set. The house is the mode here. So why can't we use an object to accomplish this? Let's see what happens if we try to. So I'm going to create an object called occurrences. My mindset here is I want to, okay, so I want to count up the amount of each type of object in my data set. If I've seen them already, I increment their value. If I have not seen them yet, I start their value off at one. If that's a little bit confusing, go back and watch my mode video. So I have my object. I want to loop over nums and for each element in this nums array, I'm just gonna console log that element to see what it looks like. And then I want to set it as a key on my occurrences object. Now, what do we think will happen when I try to do that? Let's take a look down here where I actually console log out what occurrences is and see what happens. So you can see in my terminal window, I have 
those three elements console logged out. That's my house, house, and office. And then I have my final occurrences object. What is happening here? Well, basically it's saying this is an instance of the object object. And that's not very helpful. You can see that when we try to set an object as a key on an object, it just doesn't work. JavaScript does not like that. But with a map, we can set an object or another compound type value as a key. So that's what we're gonna do next. So this is my implementation using map. Let's check out what I have going on here. I have declared house and office as objects. I have my array of objects here, house, house, and office. House should still be the mode, there are two of them. So I said, given an array of objects, find the mode of the array that is the object which occurs the most times. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this map syntax here to create a new map, I'm calling it occurrences. Then I am looping over nums and I'm saying for each num, which is going to be one of these objects here, if the occurrences map does not already have that num as a key, then I'm going to create it as a key on the map and set its corresponding value to one. Else, if the object already exists as a key in my map, in other words, if I've already gone through this step for that particular key, then I want to increment its corresponding value. And I do that by saying set its value as that num, which is the object and its corresponding value, we're going to have to get the previous value and increment it by one. So that's gonna be like kind of part one. Let's actually take a look at what the occurrences map looks like after this step. So I'm gonna console log occurrences, close enough, occurrences, and I have some more steps down here, but we'll skip that for now. Okay, so let's console log and see what occurrences is at this step of the way. Okay, so I have a map with two key value pairs. And you can see that I have this object, doors to Windows 8, which is my house here. And it says I have two of them. And I have my office and I have one of them, which makes sense, right, given the data set. So why does this work? Why, why is it able to look at a previous object and see like with some reference to the previous object, actually this is a second instance of the same object? Well, basically um, how a map will compute that is based on an algorithm, the same value zero equality algorithm, uh, which basically is going to say, check a new object against the previous object. If they are, says functionally identical, then we're going to assume that they are the same instance of the same object. And then the, the zero bit here is basically this added caveat that uh, positive and negative zero, which we're not gonna go into in this video, are considered equal. Okay, so let's work with that from here. So I have my map of occurrences. Now I need to take that map of occurrences and I basically need to say, okay, this object here has two occurrences. This object only has one. So I want my final mode, what I want this program to actually spit out is this object here, which is our, our house object. So how do I do that? I have to loop over the key value pairs of my map and check everyone's corresponding value and see, okay, is this the greatest value we've seen so far? And at the very end, whichever one has the greatest value, we're going to return its corresponding key. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I have a greatest key variable and a greatest value variable, which we are both continuously updating. I'm looping over, notice I'm able to loop directly over using the for of loop, the map, because the map is an iterable and I'm able to extract out the key and value. And this is called destructuring. So I'm basically grabbing each key and value in any given iteration of this loop over my map and saying, okay, if the particular value that we are currently looking at is greater than the greatest value we've seen so far, then I want to update the greatest key we've seen so far, and I want to update the greatest value we've seen so far. And it does that for every key value pair in my map. And then at the very end, I am returning the greatest key we've seen so far, which will be our mode. So when I finally console log out greatest key at the end, 
I do in fact see doors to Windows 8 object, which I know is my house. Okay, so that's a quick example of map. If you found this helpful, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, share it with a friend, hit me with a subscribe, and I will see you all again next time.